Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for Ask Me, our educational webinar series. My name's Audra Hines, Vice President of Care Services for the ALS Association Golden West Chapter. And I'm Asher Garfinkel, Vice President of Community Outreach. It's nice to see a wonderful list of attendees this evening. Everyone from familiar longtime friends of the chapter, who could probably be on camera with us as a speaker on this topic, to some people we haven't seen in a while, to some names that are very new to the chapter. Welcome and aloha to all. Tonight we'll provide you with an overview about the Golden West chapter, our work, where we've been, and more important, where we're going in the months to come, along with opportunities for you to get involved. And then we'll answer some attendee questions. The mission of the Golden West chapter is to discover treatments and cures for ALS and to serve, advocate for, and empower people affected by ALS to live their lives to the fullest. Thanks, Asher, that's right. The Golden West chapter is one of the largest ALS patient service organizations in the country, serving more than 1,800 people living with ALS and their loved ones in 31 California counties and the entire state of Hawaii. We're committed to meeting the diverse needs of the ALS community and to ensuring that no one's alone when facing this disease. Everything we do advances the search for effective treatments and cures for ALS. We pursue our vision to create a world without ALS by fighting the disease on three interdependent fronts, providing comprehensive and compassionate care services, advancing public policy, and funding the most promising ALS research around the world. As we know too well, 2020 brought uncertainty, isolation, and unrest to the world. And it was also a year of change, expansion, and innovation. Thanks to the support of many volunteer leaders, donors at all levels, and thousands of event participants, the Golden West chapter of the ALS Association turned challenges into opportunities to deliver upon our mission and vision in new and impactful ways. Now more than ever before, we've increased our programs and services, thus increasing our impact. Despite facing issues related to the pandemic, the care services team interacted with and served an incredible number of families. We met the individualized needs of many new types of groups who have found great support in connecting with one another. We launched our new equipment loan program in Northern California, which helped support our increased need for loaning more pieces of vital equipment. COVID-19 protocols were created so that our staff were able to triage equipment loan requests in order of priority to continue to safely deliver equipment and meet the most urgent needs. Staying strongly connected with our clinics and clinic directors has provided a regular opportunity for updates in both directions, and it's created a good opportunity for all of them to share and collaborate with one another. You'll see that a large percentage of our referrals over the course of a year come through our multidisciplinary clinics and other healthcare providers. These clinic relationships are critical for the chapter and for our communities. Our care managers are on site at these clinics as part of the multidisciplinary team in order to provide continuity of care and address the non-medical needs of patients. You'll see that we have several certified and recognized ALS treatment centers as part of the chapter. If you or your loved one is not already being seen at an ALS Association affiliated treatment center, please reach out to us at the chapter and we will refer you. We know that being seen by a multidisciplinary team via such a center can improve and many times extend life expectancy for those living with ALS. Some of you've participated in our 2020 educational webinar series, much like this one tonight. And I'm pleased to say we focused on a wide variety of topics this past year that were relevant to the ALS community. And you'll see our numbers of attendees and those who viewed the presentations at a later time are impressive. Since they're now recorded and part of the chapter's online library of resources, the number of views will continue to rise. These resources are always available for you and you can find them via our website or our YouTube channel to watch them on demand. So what's new from us in 2021? As we head into year two of the pandemic and we all view a light at the end of the tunnel, many of these programs and services are now here to stay and some recent developments have empowered us to do even more for our families. We have several new topic specific support groups this year, as well as a variety of webinars on different subjects relevant to the ALS community. 
We also recently received a grant award to provide respite care to families. This is intended for those who have a regular family member or other caregiver providing care, and it allows time for that person to have a short break or a respite. The chapter is thrilled to be able to pay for this and provide this for several families this year. Additionally, we're working on some other important initiatives. Throughout the course of this year and next, we're undertaking a project that seeks to address the number of people we're serving, specifically in LA County. We know that prevalence rates of ALS indicate that we likely don't know about quite a few individuals who are living with ALS in some of our markets. Thanks to some new funding, we have the ability to seek consultation to better understand the why behind this and to develop a strategic plan for finding and serving more people in underserved communities. Asher, back to you. Thanks, Audra. Our next mission priority is research. Uh, the Golden West chapter helps to power the world's largest ALS research program, fueling more than 160 active scientific projects in labs in 13 countries around the globe. We are not tied to any one lab. We don't fund buildings where research is housed. We fund the most promising research and science everywhere, inspiring partnerships across all sectors, government, industry, academia, and nonprofits, while supporting new generations of scientists. In January, the Golden West chapter presented and hosted the 11th annual and first ever virtual uh, California ALS Research Summit, bringing together over 150 world-renowned researchers, investigators, clinicians, biotech companies, government representatives, and advocates in ALS and related fields. From someone like me who's not a scientist or a medical professional, I must say it is inspiring and encouraging to see so many scientific and medical professionals convening in one place from all over the world, sharing data and ideas, and all of whom have committed every day of their professional life to treating and curing neurodegenerative diseases. Our keynote speaker at the summit was 2020 Nobel Prize winner in chemistry, Jennifer Doudna of Northern California's UC Berkeley and Gladstone Institutes. Uh, Dr. Doudna, Doudna pioneered CRISPR gene editing technology, which is being used in a number of scientific projects in the search for treatments and cures for ALS and other neurodegenerative diseases. The chapter also partnered with ClinWiki.org in the launch of a new online clinical trial platform crowdsourced in the style of Wikipedia and Yelp. The goal is to improve access to clinical trial information for people with ALS and their families and to increase innovation for better and faster trials. The Golden West chapter has helped to fund significant investment in gene and gene mutation discovery linked to ALS. Since 1993, you'll see there have been more than 25 such discoveries, 10 in just the past eight years. Each new ALS gene discovery provides researchers with therapeutic targets, increasing the likelihood that treatments and cures will be found. We are also supporting new ways to more efficiently test potential therapies, including the ALS Association's investment in the Healy ALS platform trial, the first of its kind in ALS research. In a platform trial, essentially scientists are able to use placebo participant data and share other data while testing a number of therapeutics, not just one, thus reducing costs and time. In the past five years, there have been these promising advances and more, including the first FDA approval of a treatment for ALS in 22 years, a Daravome. All conversations about ALS, including those that we hear from researchers at the annual research summit and the directors of our clinic partners suggest that over the next five years, we will witness even greater, more impactful discoveries and approvals. There are more clinical trials and more scientific projects that underway than ever before in the history of the disease. There are more pharmaceutical companies taking interest in ALS than ever before. And to tie back to Audra's segment on programs and services, 
Research doesn't only depend on labs and scientists. It relies on the people in our service area who are helped by our care managers and who populate clinical trials. It relies on clinical trials running in the multidisciplinary clinics with whom we partner. And research progress relies on people like you who take the time to learn about ALS and share your story. And scientific discovery doesn't stop with our own financial investment in ALS research. Uh, we've been able to amplify that investment in a couple of ways. Uh, one, by fueling and facilitating collaboration among researchers and clinics. Our initial grant investments have led to several new partnerships among ALS scientists. The other way we are able to expand financial and legislative support for research is through advocacy. And Audra will tell you about those efforts now. Great, thanks so much, Asher. As many lobbyists will tell you, as soon as you stop sharing your story, the issue goes away in legislators' minds. Many dedicated ALS advocates work year-round at the federal, state, and local levels to address legislative issues and secure funding to improve the lives of people with ALS and their families. Our efforts in California, Hawaii, and across the nation have educated elected officials and raised public awareness to increase access to equipment and services, to accelerate drug development and to protect insurance and disability benefits, as well as helping reduce barriers to ALS care and research. Last year, the chapter joined a broad coalition of dedicated patient advocates, families facing ALS, Nobel Prize winners, medical professionals and scientists to support the passage of Proposition 14, the Californians for Stem Cell Research Treatments and Cures Initiative of 2020. The initiative authorized $5.5 billion in state general obligation bonds with $1.5 billion dedicated to development of treatments for diseases of the brain and central nervous system. Another advocacy success last year on the federal level was passage of the bipartisan ALS Disability Insurance Access Act to waive the five month waiting period for people with ALS to start receiving their social, social security disability insurance benefits. And the Golden West chapter advocated in California and Hawaii for early access to the COVID-19 vaccinations. As a result of these efforts, just last week, March 15th, people living with ALS and their spouses and caregivers in California are now eligible to receive the vaccine. Currently in Hawaii, only individuals who are 65 years of age or older are eligible, but we do continue to work with the state to push for access for those with a high-risk condition like ALS in Hawaii. We also continue to advocate with the state of California to renew funding for our wraparound model of care that includes our in-depth concierge level care services, as well as critical funding for ALS clinics and care centers. And this year, as Asher suggested, one of our main priorities is to increase federal funding for ALS research. We are asking Congress to increase funding to at least $130 million for ALS research at the National Institutes of Health. We are advocating for $60 million in funding from the Department of Defense's ALS research program as people who have served in the military are more likely to develop ALS than the general population. And Congress should provide at least $10 million to continue the National ALS Registry and Biorepository to help identify risk factors for ALS to reduce the number of cases, conduct surveillance of incidents and prevalence, and collect biospecimens that will lead to a better understanding of who may develop ALS. During COVID-19, we also learned how very important and effective telehealth is in the lives of people living with ALS and their caregivers. Another priority is urging the federal government to permanently extend telehealth expansions to ensure that all healthcare services important to people with ALS are covered by their insurance. Advocates representing the Golden West chapter will participate in the 2021 National Virtual ALS Advocacy Conference and meet with congressional representatives this June to share their powerful stories about living with ALS. This is such an important and easy way to become involved with the Golden West chapter. Your voice really does make a difference. Please visit our website to find out more about how you can become an ALS advocate. Now, I'd like to welcome two special guests, Neil Foley, a retired fire captain who's living with ALS, and his wife, Dawn.
Hi, my name is Don Foley. And I'm Neil Foley. And we are a team fighting for Foley um, for the SoCal ride to defeat ALS. Well, not only are, uh, am I co-chair of the SoCal ride to defeat ALS, I am also a board member of the Golden West chapter. I'm 100% Irish. And so I equate a lot of things to a bar stool. So I apologize for that. But the three legged bar stool, if one leg goes up, you topple over. And the Golden West chapter has been so great. First, they got to raise money to find a care and a cure. That's A number one. Second, they don't forget about the people who are sick. They help with the support groups. They help with the loan closet, which is huge. And we have benefited from that. But also, they advocate for us, people with ALS and other terminal diseases on a state and federal level to get the laws changed. Without their lobbying efforts, fundraising, and support of the people that are sick, that chair would topple over. And I don't want my chair to topple over. So I love what the Golden West chapter does. One of the things that's been really important for us on this journey is the support groups. And the support groups really do provide, um, lack of a better word, support to find families that are going through the same thing that you're going through. Uh, before we found the support group, it, we thought we were here. And we thought that really ALS was such a rare disease. But when you hear those words that you have ALS, your world becomes very small. But the group around you, it seems like everybody else around you has ALS because you find each other. And I think with the support groups that the Golden West chapter provides has given us actually some great friendships with the other families that we've met on this journey that I know will, will continue to be friends for years. And not only is it the companionship going through the same disease, it's also information. The support group will have guest speakers about what your Medicare benefits may or may not be. Um, breathing issues. They've had um, people come in, attorneys, talk about wills and things like that that need to be done. There are pieces of equipment that are so expensive and many people need them. And with the help of the loan closet, a family may not have to purchase that piece of equipment. And um, that's super helpful because this disease is very expensive. But there is something that we would like to ask all of you. We would like to ask you to advocate, to participate, to donate, to share and learn along with us but mostly donate. Together, we will defeat ALS. Never give up. Thanks so much, Don and Neil. Indeed, one other priority of ours at the chapter is to provide an opportunity for anyone touched by this devastating disease to gather, share, and connect with others. And I'll let the slides catch up to me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Cynthia. Uh, it is through our community outreach activities that, as Don suggests, people are able to participate, advocate, donate, learn, and form important bonds. Each year, the chapter hosts numerous family-friendly activities to empower the ALS community and inspire others to create a world without ALS. Uh, we will be answering questions in a moment, but we'd like to first give you a run-through of our year ahead. 
So one such activity is the Golden West chapter, Walk to Defeat ALS. It's the chapter's largest annual gathering of the ALS community through which ALS families, friends, neighbors, and colleagues work to build awareness, help, and hope to benefit people living with ALS. They are joined by health providers, researchers, corporations, advocates, celebrities, media, politicians, and others who walk in honor of, in memory of, and in support of those affected by ALS. We have 11 walk communities spanning our service area, and for the first time ever, we are bringing them all together to walk, share stories, and take action on the same day. That's October 23rd while we work on raising $1.2 million in walk sponsorship and donations to support the urgent efforts of the chapter. The actual morning will be virtual, presented in a Zoom meeting format. We are hopeful by then, uh, by then uh, entire teams in these communities will be able to watch and participate together in groups from anywhere in the world, and then share in an activity together your way, whether it be walking, hiking, or just having fun with the group at home or in a park. And the walk staff have developed ways to bring the walk to you at home. One of the good things that come out of the pandemic is that activities like the Walk to Defeat ALS and this webinar this evening, have uh, turned uh, activities like this that have turned virtual are more accessible than ever. And that's not going to change. That's not going away. If you're interested in starting a team or joining an existing team, please visit walktober.org, walktober with a dash, uh, for more information. Registration is free, there is no fundraising minimum, and the sooner you sign up, the sooner you'll start receiving chapter updates, information, and ideas of how best to enjoy walk day with your family and with your team. Now, if endurance activities are more appealing to you or anyone you know, and you'd like to participate in them to support the ALS community, our Team Challenge ALS events might be for you. What started as one cycling event in wine country has evolved into an entire event series, featuring several ways to experience physical challenges while raising awareness and funds for the chapter. So in chronological order, We've got a small handful of them. On April 17th, we invite you to join the EF Wallengren Hoop Fest, created in memory of TV writer and high school basketball coach, Ernie Wallengren, who died from ALS. Uh, this is an annual basketball tournament based in Calabasas, California. And while COVID is preventing us from gathering in person this year, we are implementing the Hoop Fest Challenge whereby anyone anywhere with a love of basketball and other leisure activities can take a shot at ALS. On April 25th is the Jim Tracy 5K in memory of San Francisco's University High School Championship cross country coach uh, who lost his battle with ALS. We'll begin on the 25th with a Zoom start line and then our many participants will 5K their way while sharing their routes and their mileage and why they run and raising funds and awareness and registration is free. On May 15th, it's the fifth annual SoCal Ride to Defeat ALS and Trail Run, which as you heard is co-chaired by Neil and Don Foley. Join us for our Zoom start line and then you can cycle, hike or walk a distance of your choice and take the challenge with us uh, for an unforgettable day, putting the brakes on ALS. And then please save the date for September 18th, the Team Challenge ALS flagship event, the Napa Valley Ride to Defeat ALS and Walk. Uh, details are still to be determined, but whether it's our bodies or just our hearts and minds in Napa, uh, cyclists and other outdoor enthusiasts of all abilities are invited to take part in the na nation's largest single fundraiser, in support of the ALS community. The fundraising goal for that event is $1 million. We've surpassed that amount before and we'll do it again for our ALS community with the help of some remarkable volunteer leaders. And if you'd rather put together an endurance activity yourself in support of people living with ALS, you can run to defeat ALS, you can hike to defeat ALS, especially in June to celebrate National Trails Month, and even try to defeat ALS, that's T-R-I, as in complete a triathlon. Also later in the year, on November 18th, we will be hosting our annual Champions for Cures and Care celebration, 
during which we pay tribute to our ALS community and recognize extraordinary individuals and organizations. And December 6th, swing away for our annual Peterson International Underwriters ALS Golf Classic in person at Valencia Golf Club in Valencia, California. Golfers of all levels and abilities are welcome. All year long, the Community of Hope is an online collection of customizable perpetual tribute funds that allow supporters to establish a lasting legacy in honor or in memory of a loved one affected by ALS. And if none of the above activities is of interest to you, giving to the Golden West chapter can be done either directly or through a number of different gift models that can provide tax benefits and even income. Philanthropy fuels everything that we do at the Golden West chapter, and we're proud to offer all of these ways for you to have fun and be a part of the community while raising critically needed funds and awareness to move us closer to our vision to create a world without ALS. In any mode you choose, donors can give to the Golden West chapter with great confidence. And that's because for the eighth consecutive year, Charity Navigator, America's largest independent charity evaluator has awarded the Golden West chapter its highest rating in recognition of strong investment in our mission priorities, sound fiscal management, accountability and transparency. Only 5% of rated organizations receive this exceptional distinction. If you're watching tonight, you should, uh, I, did I sound, it sounded like I said washing. If you're watching tonight, you should all, you all should be signed up to receive our chapter's monthly e-newsletter, which includes many articles about research, care services, and public policy initiatives, as well as updates on chapter efforts and initiatives, spotlight articles on families, and more. If you're not receiving the e-news in your inbox each month, just contact us and we will make sure it gets to you. And please be sure to join us in all the ways you can on social media by liking, following, and watching us on a channel of your choice via at ALSA Golden West. That's A-L-S-A Golden West. So as you can see, there are many ways to participate in our Golden West chapter activities and events. We invite you to get involved in a way that is meaningful to you. Thank you for your support. It is only together that we will defeat ALS. So Audra, shall we answer some questions? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing them on my end, but um, um, one uh, person asked, how do I get my family member with ALS connected to a care manager? That is a great question and very easy to answer. Um, you can simply reach out to the chapter uh, via, via email, via phone at any time. Um, we always have someone to um, answer this question, to talk to families, to talk to the person living with ALS or any family members who might be interested in our care services. Um, and we can certainly assign you a care manager, um, typically based on where you live, based on geography. Uh, we have care managers assigned to all different parts of our chapter territory. So we can do that at any time. Just reach out to us. Please do. And Audra, I'm seeing a question now. How can I be notified about new chapter activities and events? Uh, I would say for this evening's purposes, you can uh, just email us at askme at also Golden West. Dot org and um, uh, email us our, your information and uh, your email especially, and we'll make sure that you get on the e-news list. Uh, you can also um, you know, put that information in the chat if you want, and, and we will uh, we'll pick up that information from you. Super. Um, I also have a question. Um, does it cost anything to rent or borrow equipment from the chapter? The answer is absolutely not. Our care services and equipment loan programs are all free of charge to people living with ALS and their families. So again, this is something that our care managers help coordinate through our equipment loan programs in terms of the specific piece that you, you might need, particularly um, if it's something that your insurance doesn't cover. Um, we know that happens from time to time. Your care manager will talk that through with you and we'll find out if we have one in our loan program, we will check it out to you absolutely free. A lot of care questions here, Audra. 
Okay, and I'm I'm sorry, I'm not seeing them for some reason in my Q and A. We can you ask me out loud? Uh, how do I get my family member with ALS connected to a care manager? Can the chapter assist me in applying for benefits such as disability? Right. So this is another piece of the work of our care managers through throughout the chapter in California and Hawaii. This is certainly something that the care manager can talk through with you. We know that applying for disability can be a complicated process, although, as you heard earlier in the presentation, now that we've had this five month waiting period eliminated for people living with ALS, um, the process happens much, much quicker now. So this is certainly something that a care manager can walk you through in terms of how you need to start, how you apply, do you need to talk to an attorney? Um, they're all very skilled at, at walking people through that. Uh, here's one that I can probably start to answer. And then uh, Audra, if you want to elaborate, go ahead. Sure. Uh, the question is, are support groups only for patients or can family members attend? Can we attend more than one group? So uh, the support groups are for family members and caregivers as well, and you uh, can certainly attend more than one group. And we have some chapter-wide uh, topic-specific groups as well as uh, local groups within your community. That's right. So um, we often have lots of family members and loved ones attend most of our support groups. Um, we also have some groups that are specifically for caregivers and family members. Um, so for, for that very um, specific segment of, of our constituent base, um, but, but welcome to join at any time um, in our groups. Anyone from the community is open to that. Uh, how are certified ALS clinics different from regular doctor's offices? Mm, okay. Um, so an ALS center, um, there's actually a, a pretty extensive process that an ALS center goes through um, to become affiliated with the ALS Association. So our national office through the ALS Association um, is the body that, that affiliates centers. So uh, we establish the relationship first with the ALS center in our chapter area we make a recommendation based on whether this center has all of the multidisciplinary care in order. And we've had a relationship with them for some time, meaning that the care managers in the clinic, staffing the clinic, meeting with the patients on a regular basis, we then make a recommendation as a chapter to our national office that this center is meeting the uh, criteria to become a certified treatment center or a recognized treatment center. So it starts with us, it moves to our national office. Um, we have 26 centers in the Golden West chapter area who are affiliated. Uh, here's a question, does it cost money to participate in, in events such as the walks? So for uh, some events, uh, a very few events, uh, yes, but most of them, uh, no and uh, our, our walks are completely free uh, for registration. Uh, all of our virtual events are free. If you are someone with ALS or, uh, and or a, if you're someone with ALS or a caregiver, uh, our events are free to you no matter what. You just reach out to us and we will make sure that you're, you're able to attend in a way that's meaningful for you. Uh, there are uh, a few events. We have our gala type event called Champions for Cures and Care. Uh, there is a ticket price for that. Uh, again, once again, people with ALS and a caregiver are welcome to uh, watch that for free. Uh, we have a golf event, as I mentioned, and um, that typically costs for somebody to participate in that because there's an expense to the chapter to put on that event and, and raise more funds for our mission. But by and large, uh, our, our events are, are free of charge. Um, right. You don't have the questions in front of you. <laughs> I'm not is sure your, what happened. Is there an equipment loan program in Southern California? Yes, there is. We actually have an equipment loan program in Southern California that is facilitated by Superior Medical Equipment Company. We've been partners with them for a long, long time. 
In Northern California, our uh, equipment loan program is run by New Motion, and we have a whole separate loan program that covers the state of Hawaii, and we have a staff person there who manages that loan program. So really, anywhere you live in the Golden West chapter area, if there's something that you need that's part of our equipment loan inventory, we can get that to you. Uh, somebody's asking, what is the difference between AAC and DMC? Do you supply both? Probably DME, right? So DME right. is dur yeah, durable medical equipment, which um, tends to be um, bigger pieces of, of equipment, uh, wheelchairs, uh, walkers, things um, that, you know, are kind of fall more in the, under the durable medical equipment category. AAC refers specifically to communication devices. So um, a variety of types of um, message boards, boogie boards, um, Toby devices, things like that, that we have to loan out within our AAC equipment program. Um, it's a little bit separate actually from the DME program. We have someone separate who facilitates that, um, but always, always pieces to loan out for both. Uh, here's one about uh, support groups, wondering if there are any plans to possibly offer weekly uh, virtual uh, uh, support groups for people with ALS or caregivers as opposed to monthly? Great question. So right now we have between 30 and 35 groups in a month, uh, which is quite a few more than we had even a year ago before COVID hit. We took advantage of this virtual environment to, to be able to do this. So really you could find a group just about every week um, if you wanted to stay connected to people across the chapter. Um, we, again, we have the topic specific groups that I mentioned earlier, um, but we also have general support groups that are just a good check-in, good informa information sharing, collaboration, just um, a nice place to get to know some other people in the community and hear about other people's stories, other people's challenges, ask a lot of questions. Um, we do have one group that I think meets a couple of times a month, but most of them are once a month. Again, we have groups offered almost every week each month. So if you really wanted to find something else, that's always uh, via our chapter online calendar or our care, any of our care managers could point you in the direction of um, joining different groups and the schedule for those. And just confirming, and this is based on a question, uh, the support groups are free of charge. They are free of charge always. Uh, let's see. Good questions. Yeah. How do you notify people about your events and activities? Well, the best way to stay dialed in to uh, what we're doing each month is to receive the e-news. And uh, the e news will um, uh, will let you know about events, activities. It will spotlight uh, individuals. It will tell you about advocacy efforts and and so forth. Uh, if any of these specific activities uh, were of great interest to you, uh, you can let us know by um, emailing us at askme at allsogoldenwest.org. And uh, we'll be sure to email you that specific information about that specific event. And uh, we're gonna be having a survey coming your way after this as well. So mm -hmm. you can fill out the survey and just let us know that you're interested in one specific activity over another. Um, okay, here's a question for you, Audra. How does the communications work when the person with ALS can no longer speak? Right. Great question. Um, so lots of different ways, actually, there are lots of different devices that can help with this, um, depending on if the speech um, is completely gone or if it's starting to fade. Um, typically, we do suggest as part of that multidisciplinary team through your ALS center um, that you speak with the speech therapist who's on staff as part of the team to help assess what the best choice might be for you. And if, if you're feeling like um, speech and communication is starting to become an issue, there are some, some easy, simple tools that can be implemented for you. Um, 
if, if you're feeling, you know, a little bit further into your journey with this, then there are, of course, other things that the speech therapist could suggest as well. So it's really a very wide range just in terms of um, current ability level and, um, you know, what you're still able to do and um, lots of things to suggest around that. Uh, somebody's asking, does being an advocate require travel? And uh, the answer to that is no. Um, opportunities to travel come up once in a while, but uh, for the most part, no, you can do advocacy right from your own home. You can sign up to be uh, uh, an, an uh, e-advocate where mm -hmm. you can uh, get notifications about advocacy, oh, advocacy alerts, mm -hmm. and you can uh, th uh, through our advocacy portal, send uh, uh, messages to our, you know, your local and federal legislators and let them know about the issues that are important to you. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, the, the advocacy conference this year actually is going to be 100% virtual. So nobody's, nobody needs to leave their house for that one. That's right. Yeah. Just to piggyback on that, um, you know, we're certainly meeting with lots of legislators and their staffers um, all via Zoom still right now. Um, and that continues to happen and will continue for the next several months. So um, very easy to fold in um, lots of folks who want to get involved in that way. And I should mention that the best way to advocate is just to share your story, to yeah. keep keep the story of ALS to keep your story and what your issues and concerns are uh, in the spotlight of those who are decision makers. That's right. So um, let me see. Sorry, I can't see them. Okay. Um, Uh, somebody's wondering what is the lead time required for obtaining durable equipment such as electric wheelchairs? Um, the lead time to, to get it? Yeah, I, I assume the turnaround time for- To receive it, uh, right. So yeah. so once, um, once your care manager works with you to determine which piece specifically you need and they find out that we have that in our loan program, um, they reach out immediately to our equipment loan vendor, um, depending on where you live geographically. And um, that vet, our vendors usually are, are very timely and reply um, quickly. So usually when we make the request, um, it, there, there might be a week or two sort of time in between, um, you know, in, in terms of them actually delivering it. Um, but it's, it's usually a fairly quick turnaround time. Oh, here's a good one. I like this one. Uh, can my company sponsor an event or do something to help fight ALS? Who would they contact? Well, uh, call me. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lines are open. Um, yeah, uh, if uh, we we definitely rely on on corporate partners to fuel what we do as much as uh, you know, individual participants and teams and and our events and people who are purchasing tables for our uh, champions event and foursomes for golf. But uh, we also rely on, on sponsors to help get us there and to, to, to show their commitment to uh, the Golden West chapter. And um, it's a good way for companies to show their interest in the ALS community and, uh, and, and get to know what we do and the, and the people that we serve. So uh, for simplicity, um, again, you can email, uh, ask me, because I'm not gonna try to have you spell my name and my email address out. We'll be here all night as I try to spell it out for you. So just email askme at alsagoldenwest.org and uh, uh, via email there, just let us know that you are interested in sponsoring an event, if you know exactly what event that is. Uh, also, please let me know and uh, I'll, I'll get in touch with you right away. Great, and I actually have a texted question. Um, do we know when the support groups will go back to an in-person format? It's a great question. Um, we don't anticipate that happening this calendar year. And, and to be honest, um, 
it's working really well to do this via Zoom. We certainly know the benefit of gathering together in person and some people will likely want that again at some point. We'll take a look at that, I think a few months down the road. But right now we have so, so many more people who are able to join these groups who were never able to before for lots of different reasons. And we can have someone who is all the way in Hawaii join a veteran support group that's being run by somebody in Bakersfield, California. So it's really been a terrific opportunity for us to expand our reach in terms of how many people attend these, um, these different types of programs, including like this webinar tonight. Um, but certainly with our support groups, I think we're going to be taking a closer look at that in the coming months. Um, and looking at what makes sense to go back to in-person and what makes sense to stay virtual. Uh, how do home visits occur during the pandemic? Um, no in-person home visits during the pandemic. So we've been doing home visits via Zoom. And it, it's much like you're seeing us right now. The care manager would set up a Zoom time to call the person in the family um, to see you in your home to really um, get to know you a bit better than you can just with an audio call via phone, um, to be able to see your environment a bit, um, maybe take a look at different pieces of medical equipment that are being used, um, um, Sometimes some of our families have been able to um, kind of walk around their house with their with their phone or their device to show the care manager some of their home. We want to make sure there aren't tripping hazards, um, cords, rugs, things like that that people might need to think about just from a mobility standpoint. Um, so we really Zoom is kind of our new best friend for lots of our programs and services. Um, we've been functioning with many of our multidisciplinary clinics in this way for the last many months as well. So see, so meeting with the team at the ALS center via zoom, but also seeing, um, any of their patients via zoom as well. So this question is, is it true that people who have served in the military get ALS more often than other people? And yes, uh, that is true. People, um, uh, who have served in the military uh, anywhere, well, really anywhere on the planet during wartime and peace are twice as likely to get ALS as the general population. And the confounding thing is we don't know why. And we are funding research looking into that. Uh, and um, we are, you know, we, we hope we can find an answer someday and we're working on it. It's, it's a priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, um, you know, part of the reason that we we tailored um, a new group specific to veterans and um, all of our care managers are really uh, plugged into VA benefits and what veterans might be eligible for through those benefits. Um, so if you're a veteran and you ever have questions around that, um, your care manager can certainly help answer those. And if if it's something complicated and they may not necessarily know, they certainly have resources within the VA to reach out to to help. Somebody's wondering, are there any social events or gatherings where people with ALS can come together and just do something fun? Well, we work on making all of our events fun and uh, we invite you to, to join us to any of these events that I uh, took you through here. If you've never been to one of our Zoom start lines, we're, we're not gonna be gathering in, in person this year. Um, we're committed to remaining virtual. Uh, we, given how high risk uh, at receiving um, uh, uh, you know, complications and severe uh, symptoms related to COVID, uh, given given that for the ALS community, we want to uh, be sure that we don't rush into opening the doors. I think Dr. Fauci just today said uh, uh, we are at the corner, but we haven't turned the corner yet. And so we are being as cautious as possible. And um, we believe that the ALS community will probably be the, the last community to gather in person at our events. However, 
that doesn't mean we're not going to have some fun with our events this year. And we found ways to both physically bring the event to you by bringing team captain kick kits and goodie boxes and things so that you can participate and, and watch what we're putting on uh, uh, at home. And our Zoom start lines are, are really fun. And uh, for any of those events I mentioned, if we have a Zoom start line, I recommend uh, joining us for that. And uh, it's great to see that, um, you know, it's it's really fun. We, we do it in the Zoom meeting style. So you can see that whole gallery of individuals in front of you. And it's hundreds of other individuals showing off their team t-shirts, showing off their team signs and so forth, uh, waving when their team is acknowledged and so forth. And uh, it just reminds each and every one of us that nobody is going to be alone with this disease. We're all here to support you. I was at most of those events last year. I thought they were all fun, Asher. Your team did a great job doing those. Um, we have a question I see. Um, are there any programs for younger children and families facing ALS? Um, it's a timely question. We actually have a group, a support group starting next month that um, is for the person with ALS and their spouse, caregiver, uh, for those who are raising young kids. We have a couple of care managers who are very interested in helping support families who are raising young kids. Um, and they will both be facilitating this group. That'll be a monthly group um, for those who are raising younger children. So this is, um, this is a new topic for us in terms of a support group. Um, I'm really excited and interested to see how this goes. So if it's something that you're interested in, uh, please know that we're starting that in April. Um, we do have some specific um, pieces that your care manager can provide as well um, for kids and teens who have a parent living with ALS. So um, please always reach out to your care manager. That's something that they can provide for you. Um, there's some good stuff out there. So we are coming up at about five minutes before the hour. Uh, are we going to still answer a few questions here or are we wrapping it up? Um, if we have a couple more, we can, or we can wrap up. Uh, we have a couple more, so we'll okay. do a couple more. Uh, yeah. I've heard that there's a type of ALS that can be genetic. How can I find out? Well, you can find out right here and now. There, uh, there, is, there are really two main types of ALS. We have uh, there's familial ALS that is uh, carried through the genes from generation to generation. Uh, that is ten about ten percent of all ALS cases. And then 90% is sporadic. And we don't know why people with sporadic uh, ALS get it. So uh, yes, there is a genetic form. And if you want to learn, learn more, just go to our, our website at alsagoldenwest.org and uh, click on about ALS. And then uh, what geographic area does your chapter cover? I heard you mention Hawaii. Uh, so we cover 31. California counties, and then the entire state of Hawaii. And I think that's about it for the questions. Great, all good questions, all good questions. Cynthia, I think we'll um, switch back to our last couple of slides. Thanks so much. Um, and thank you uh, really so much to all of you for joining us tonight. We're just so grateful to each of you for your time and your commitment and for being a part of our community. Our programs are made possible by individuals and families and foundations and companies who care deeply about the ALS community. Your generous support fuels absolutely everything we do and everything we do advances the search for effective treatments and cures for ALS. And if you like what you've heard tonight, you and you too would like to support the Golden West chapter, please consider making a donation today at give.alsagoldenwest.org also, please watch for the short survey on tonight's presentation that you'll receive via email in order to help us plan for future educational programs like this one. Thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.